Do you want to be a heroic history explorer? Let me lead you on an adventure through the past. Have you used this disc before? You need to fill in your name before you can travel back in time. update on the mysterious disappearance of the world-famous time traveler, Professor Timestein. The case of the missing professor has baffled authorities, but we do have a tip that he's been trapped in the past by a mysterious character who calls himself the Time Fugitive. A reward is being offered to anyone adventurous enough to rescue the professor. Stay tuned for further details. <laughs> Greetings, friends, Romans, countrymen. Hey, so you found the professor's attic. I've just zipped back from the Roman Empire. Like my legionary look? I am the time fugitive. And it was me that trapped the professor in the past. I did it because it's time that history got the attention that it deserves. How else could I get you to check out the past? So, here's the deal. First, you'll have to sniff out the missing pieces of the time trail. These could be anywhere in history. Complete the time trail and, hey, presto, you can find the professor. That's all there is to it. See you around. I'm history. Can you help the professor? Click on the notice board to find out more about your mission or click on the movie projector for a guided tour of the attic. You have discovered Professor Timestein's secret attic room, where there is lots to explore. To move around the room, just click on the sides of the walls. Click on the Time Detective poster to play a fast and fun historical identification game or click on the professor's index if you need to find a subject quickly. You'll also find his options trunk contains all sorts of helpful information about this disc. In this part of the professor's room, you can look at the historical souvenirs you have collected in your own personal time travel journal. If you want to quit, click the quit sign on the attic door. To test your historical knowledge, try answering the tricky questions in the Ancient Treasure Challenge. Or recreate scenes from the past using the History Maker. Your mission folder contains the time trail you need to complete in order to find the Professor. And last but not least, use the Professor's time machine to travel back to past worlds. Wherever you see a movie projector, you can click on it if you need more help. Your mission. Professor Timestein has been trapped in the past by the troublesome time fugitive. To rescue him, you need to explore each historical world and find all the pieces of the time trail. Watch the movie below to find out what you need to do. To rescue the professor, you must complete the time trail, which is in your mission folder. To find the missing pieces, use the time machine to travel back to a historical world. Then explore the world by clicking on things that interest you. When you see a piece of the time trail on an information screen, click on it to collect it. When you have found all eight pieces, one from each of the eight worlds, the time trail will reveal the professor's location and you will become a history explorer. Time trail. Collect the missing pieces to find the professor. <laughs> to travel back in time, first scroll along the timeline by clicking the arrows. When you have selected the destination you want, click on the round button.
You've arrived in ancient Egypt, 1200 BC. You could probably tell where you were by the pyramids. Hey, you're no mummy. <laughs> I'm off to sail down the River Nile. Coming along? Egyptian soldiers. The Egyptian army protected the country from invaders. Some soldiers rode in fast war chariots, but most fought on foot. Egyptian soldiers were armed with curved swords, axes, spears and bows. Their weapons were made from bronze and wood. Egyptian house. All Egyptian houses were built from mud bricks. They had small windows to keep the sun out and flat roofs, where people often ate and slept. The cooking was usually done in the open air. This helped to avoid fires that could burn down the house and also kept smells away. Sphinx. The Egyptians built statues of sphinxes to guard their holy places. A sphinx usually had the body of a lion and the head of a pharaoh. The Egyptians thought the statues would protect their temples and tombs from evil. Statues of sphinxes were used to scare children, to protect sacred places. Lower Egypt. The northern part of Egypt, where the Nile divided into several channels and emptied into the Mediterranean Sea, was called Lower Egypt. Pyramids. A pyramid is a huge tomb built for a pharaoh. The pharaoh believed that the pyramid would protect his treasures and his body from robbers and help his spirit reach heaven. Each of these amazing tombs took thousands of people many years to build. Pyramids were built as palaces for the pharaohs, tombs for the pharaohs. Learning to write. Not many people in ancient Egypt could read or write. Trained writers were called scribes, and it took many years for them to learn the complicated hieroglyphic writing. Scribes wrote down all the laws and events in the kingdom. <laughs> treasures of the tomb. In ancient Egypt, the dead were buried in tombs with treasures and magic charms to help them in the next world. Even though stealing from a tomb was a terrible crime, robbers often forced their way in and stole all the precious treasures. Hieroglyphs. The Egyptians developed a type of picture writing called hieroglyphics. Each hieroglyph was a tiny picture that represented a word or sound. For example, the symbol for the word owl was an owl. Hieroglyphic code. The Egyptians wrote in picture signs called hieroglyphs. Although these were not the same as letters in an alphabet, here you can have fun creating your name in some hieroglyphic symbols. Drag the hieroglyphs into the box to create your name.
mummy. The Egyptians believed that the spirit of a dead person still needed its body to live on in the next world. To preserve the dead body, it was made into a mummy. Mummies were put into special coffins and buried in tombs. The ancient Egyptians made mummies to preserve dead bodies to scare off tomb robbers. Food. Egyptians ate meat, fish, bread, vegetables, fruit and cakes sweetened with dates and honey. Egyptian bread was made from wheat. It was so gritty it could wear away people's teeth. Most people drank beer made from barley. Children drank wheat beer. Making a mummy. Turning a dead body into a mummy is called embalming. To embalm a body, the Egyptians took out the liver, lungs, stomach and brain. Then they dried out the body with a kind of salt. Finally, they stuffed the body and wrapped it in strips of linen. The River Nile. Everyone in ancient Egypt lived near the River Nile. In this dry desert country, people thought of the river as a magical, life-giving force. Once a year the river flooded, bringing water and rich black mud to the Egyptian farmers' fields. Most people in ancient Egypt lived near the River Nile, the pyramids. The Pharaoh. The Pharaoh was the king, the most powerful person in Egypt. He owned all the land and everything produced in the country. The people believed he was a god on earth. They thought he could bring the blessings of the gods to Egypt. That started the ball rolling. One down, seven ago. Entertaining the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh lived in luxury. He had a grand palace where he held splendid banquets. The Pharaoh sat on his royal throne while dancers, musicians, acrobats and magicians entertained him and his guests. Watering the crops. To keep their crops healthy in the hot sun, the Egyptians relied on water from the Nile. Farmers used a device called the shadouf to take water from the river. They dug ditches from the river to the fields so the water could flow to the plants. Farming. It was hard work ploughing and harvesting in the hot sun. Farmers worked in their fields almost all year round. They grew wheat to make bread and barley to make beer. They also grew many vegetables such as peas, beans, onions, lettuces and cucumbers. Upper Egypt. The southern part of Egypt was called Upper Egypt. There were many important towns and temples in Upper Egypt. Egyptian fashion. Egyptians loved fashion and always made sure they were clean and well dressed. Both men and women wore wigs, eye makeup, perfume and jewellery. Men wore a kilt or loincloth. 
women wore simple linen dresses. In ancient Egypt, who wore makeup and jewelry? Women only, both men and women. Magic charm. The Egyptians believed in magic. Most people wore lucky charms to protect them from danger. They asked doctors and priests for magic spells for all sorts of things, from curing diseases to becoming successful. In ancient Egypt, people wore magic charms as pretty ornaments, as protection from danger. <laughs> Egyptian children. In their free time, Egyptian boys and girls enjoyed all sorts of games. They had toys, played ball games, and had piggyback fights and races. When they were not playing, boys learned their father's job. Girls usually helped their mothers at home. Ugh. Egyptian women. Egyptian women had more freedom than women in other ancient civilizations. They could own land and run farms and businesses. A few women became doctors or priestesses, and two of ancient Egypt's most famous rulers were women. Egyptian Temple. Deep inside an Egyptian temple was a sacred shrine dedicated to a god or goddess. Only priests and priestesses were allowed to see this shrine. They had to shave their heads and wash to purify themselves before entering the temple. Who was allowed into an Egyptian temple? Priests and priestesses. Anyone. Gods and goddesses. There were dozens of gods and goddesses worshipped in ancient Egypt. Each god looked after one part of life, such as death or the harvest. Many gods had the body of a human and the head of an animal. The most important god was Re, the sun god. Nubia. This kingdom to the south of Egypt was part of the Egyptian Empire for many years. Nubia supplied Egypt with gold, ivory and animal skins. Trading for goods. The ancient Egyptians did not use money. Most people simply traded for things they needed, such as food and clothes. For example, a farmer might swap some of his crops for a new kilt. Favourite pets. Most people in ancient Egypt kept pets such as cats and dogs. The Egyptians believed that cats were sacred animals. Often when a cat died, its owner would have it made into a mummy and bury it in a special cemetery. In ancient Egypt, cats were considered stupid, sacred. Nile Boat Sailing down the River Nile was much easier than travelling across the desert. Because of this, the Egyptians did not need many roads. People made journeys by river on wooden or reed boats. They also used boats to go fishing and hunting. Ancient Egyptian boats were made of iron or steel, wood or reeds. Harvesting papyrus. Reeds called papyrus thrived along the banks of the River Nile. The Egyptians used papyrus for all sorts of things. They made sandals, boats and rope from reeds. They also discovered that they could use the reeds to make a kind of paper. 
We call this paper papyrus. Animals of the Nile Many kinds of animals lived in and around the River Nile. Fish, hippos and crocodiles swam in the river and many types of wild birds nested along its banks. The Egyptians enjoyed hunting hippos, but this was a very dangerous sport. Which of these animals did the ancient Egyptians hunt? Alligators. Hippos. Temp Daily life. 